Hey, what's up everybody? We are live. Um, it is a fantastic Thursday. Hope you're having an amazing day. Let me just uh, get this up on my phone um, so I can follow along with y'all. With y'alls. Um, how's everybody's Thursday going? Um, mine has been good. My butt has been glued to this chair. But this morning I went... Uh, hold on, let me let me get this so I can look you in the eye. Where the heck is it? Wait for it. There it is. Okay, so <laughs> mine has been uh, my day has been pretty pretty awesome. Um, I've been in this chair most of the time, working, doing some funnel building, and um, you know it's it's fun, um, and I can't wait for you guys to see what I'm working on. But um, earlier, or this morning, like I woke up um, and kind of got my wits about me for a minute, <laughs> checked my messages, all that kind of stuff, and then I went down to the clubhouse, I walked down, it's like a two minute walk, just uh, down the hill from our house, to the clubhouse that we have. There's a swimming pool, hot tub, and a clubhouse um, that has like a meeting area and then a, a workout room. So I went to go work out because I've wanted to do this for, uh, I don't know how long, I've been wanting to start working out and getting back in shape for a while. And, uh, ooh, what's up, Michael? What's up, Lisa? Hey, Tanya. How the heck are you guys? Thanks for hopping on. So um, I went down the hill to do that, and there were a couple guys that were in there doing a workout. Whoa. Thing, the wind is blowing, and our, our chairs and stuff are now blowing all over the place. So Lisa, if you're watching this, get the kids, and uh, the stuff is blowing away. <laughs> So, um, we, I, I went down and I worked out and I did like 20 minutes on the elliptical to get warmed up, but I was just like wiped out, burned like almost 300 calories. Then I did some lifting, uh, on a bench press kind of machine. So I did like the normal bench and then like in a cup incline, I did a couple of things, did three sets at each one and, oh, I am feeling it. Right. And, uh, oh, my shoulders are feeling it like, especially Look at that. I feel I feel like I'm pretty pretty ripped even though I'm out of shape. But uh, <laughs> um, and Josh, what's up? Thanks for getting on. So um, yeah, it's it's been awesome. Colleen just hopped on. I had a great conversation with Colleen in Messenger earlier today, um, and and things like that. And Colleen, I want you. So you're here. Colleen has this awesome page, and she's been publishing and doing some stuff on. And uh, I, I want you guys to go and follow it and like it. So Colleen, put in the comments, you have permission to put the link to your page in the comments. I want everyone to go and like it, okay? So there's your first assignment uh, for the day, right? But um, Colleen, uh, I'm super excited for the things that we talked about and what she's gonna be doing. It's gonna be awesome. And uh, Colleen says, feel the burn. Yes, I love it. Um, and um, so she's got some cool stuff going on. And then Lance went live today. And he shared some exciting news for Aspen Mountain Plumbing. Uh, how they're going to be doing consignment with parts. And they worked with a, a vendor and all this kind of stuff. And so they're getting ready to implement and do all that kind of stuff. So congratulations to Lance on that cool announcement. And it helps you to better serve uh, your clients, and then congratulations to Colleen for being awesome and for sharing her goodness. And uh, drop your link, Colleen. And when you do, I'm going to put it on the screen so we can all follow you. Okay? So, oh, here it is. So, everyone, go and follow right there. Um, Colleen Griffin, she's awesome. So, um. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we'll see what tomorrow feels like, right? I'm going to go work out, and I'm just like, oh, sore. So, uh, of course, I have to keep it going. I can't just do one day and then quit, right? So, um, that is the fun. Today, I want to talk to you guys about one thing that you need to and have to do if you want your clients to show you the money, right? So, that is what we're going to talk about today, and uh, I'm excited for this. So, let's jump in. All 
All right. So, again, if you haven't, go and like that page, right? Like, go and do it. I'll wait for two seconds while you go click on that link in the comments or go to this link in the in the on the screen and like Colleen and like her page, okay? Um, so Josh says, You worked out good on you, buddy. Yes, I did it. And uh, the first of many to come. So I'm excited for that. Um, so today I am talking uh, about I I've been thinking a lot about, you know, the phrase, show me the money and stuff like that. And we as business owners, that's what we want to say to our clients, right? Especially when we're starting out and we aren't charging what we're really worth and we're doing free work or, or whatever it might be, right? And um, it's just, it's, it's frustrating at times. And um, I totally understand, you know, how that can feel. Um, what, being a creative, um, it was, the skills that I have are so highly undervalued by people um, until they actually put it to work and like, holy crap, this is amazing, right? But when I talk to people, they're like, I want an awesome video or I've got a budget of 200 bucks, right? And I'm just like, that's cool. Good luck with that, you know? Now, before I'd be like, okay, the first video I ever charged somebody money for was for $250. And I was so scared to ask for that much money, right? But now as I've gone and grown my business and all that kind of stuff you know I don't I don't even like pick up my camera bag off of my uh, <laughs> uh, office floor for 200 bucks right um, and it's just one of those things that we grow and grow and we just need to uh, you know increase our value but if we want to charge people more money um, and get into the value the, uh, the levels that we truly are valuable and everything like that we have to do some things first right um so um oh i'm gonna throw this tanya she says colleen your page is amazing you're inspiring definitely going to check it out more after this live yes connecting people that is what it's all about that's this is why i love you guys okay so um today uh when we think about charging more money what are some things, like, tell me in the comments what you think uh, you need to do or have in place or whatever in order to charge uh, customers what your true value is, what you feel your value is. Like for me, I don't do video, I do video projects in the $25,000 range. I've done $10,000 for just one little video, you know, $25,000 for campaigns. I did another single video that was ended up being like five minutes long for eleven thousand dollars right um and so that's where i work when i the the neighborhood that i work in for the videos that i create for companies and for people right um i i sit down with people for 90 minutes and help them flesh out their stories right help them uh work out and go through their whole life story and figure out their brand story the thing that's going to connect them to their audience, right? And people pay me $2,000 to sit down for 90 minutes and have my attention and work through things, right? Um, it's it's a lot of fun. And um, I've been hired to write scripts for video sales letters, you know, for four or 5,000 bucks for, for a couple of uh, two minute long scripts, you know? Um, and I could charge more, right? I want, I'm wanting to charge more because all of that stuff is time intensive for me, right? Um, but I've been able to increase my uh, my rates and my costs and things like that that I charge people because I've done some things. So what what do you um, what do you guys think <coughs> that you need in order to charge your customers more? Can you think is like let me know in the comments what you think you uh, need to have in place or do or whatever in order to charge uh, your customers, your clients, what you really would like to make, uh, whether that's $2,000 or $10,000 or $20,000 or $100,000, right? Um, what do you have to do in order to be able to charge that much? Go, ready, go. And I'm gonna look and see who's on. Ashley just hopped on, what's up, Ashley? Thanks for jump, jumping on. Um, yeah. Any thoughts? What you need to do? It's one. There's there's one thing that I'm gonna say, and it is 
bring the value. Show value, right? And what does that mean? Um, value immediately translates and translates and connects to cost or price, right? The more valuable something is, the higher it costs, or the more it costs, right? Um, Tanya says testimonials, proof that you're worth it. Definitely those help. Um, but the proof that like test, how you get testimonials is by delivering, right? Is by giving them what you said you would and then some. That way they're willing to take some time out and do a testimonial for you, right? Um, Josh says, believe. You do have to have belief in yourself that you are worth what you want to charge, right? Absolutely have to have to have that belief because if you don't believe it, your customer or your client, your potential client, isn't going to believe it either. Because we're like, and this one charge like, right? If you don't believe it yourself, they're gonna not they're not gonna believe it because it's gonna translate in the way that you uh, share it, right? Michael, he says many factors. Uh, presentation of products, look and feel of business, emotion, absolutely. <clears throat> All of those things, let's look at that. Presentation of products, the look and the feel and of the business and the emotions that you bring, those are value, right? Like that's, you don't just, um, if I'm creating a video <clears throat> or for somebody and I just say, hey, we're, we're gonna do this video and it's $10,000 without knowing anything about it. That's usually where I start my quotes with people because it weeds out a lot of the tire kickers and people who aren't uh, ready to are prepared to do business the way that I do it, right? Um, but if I just say that without knowing and like, it's 10,000 bucks, send me the check and we'll come out and we'll figure it out, right? Um, where's the value in it? I'm just doing a cost, but if I, talk about how we're going to do it, what the process is and everything that's involved in it. And we craft that story that's perfect or, you know, that to, to really hit people through video and all those kinds of things. We go through that experience and I talk about and show, uh, you know, what goals is, um, are we going to accomplish by creating this video and this message? Like, what do you want to happen? Here's the things that we can do to be able to take your story to that end, right? And that is where the value comes in. That's where people see like, oh my gosh, he's not just a dude that's gonna point a camera at me um, and uh, chuck it in his computer and turn around and edit it in two minutes. No, it's like a process and there's a lot of things that go into it, right? Um, so with you guys, and then Colleen, um, ask for it. If you don't ask, they won't show you the money. So exactly. And the way that when you ask for it to have that confidence and to make it a no-brainer for them is to provide and show the value. Now, I'm not talking about your typical, you know, uh, webinar stack slide um, where it's like, you get this and it's this value and this and it's that value and this and it's this value, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can do that. There's time and a place for that. Uh, right, but I'm talking about you don't have to do that. That's not how you show the value by literally saying there's this and here's a dollar amount and this and a dollar amount. Um, it's through the process of working with you that you bring insane val excuse me, value to people. And uh, let's see, just looking to see if anybody else popped on. Um, so I want to share like a little story. I actually shared this in a live a few weeks ago. Uh, it's probably about a month ago now. But um, I was I was headed to a shoot a few weeks ago with my friend Jane, and uh, we were. I stopped at the gas station just to top off, uh, you know, before I headed out. And the gas station attendant, like I went in to prepay, there was something weird with the at the pump where I wasn't reading my card, so I went in. To the desk and said put 30 bucks on it or whatever and um it was funny she was just like saying i can't remember how just making small talk at the counter right and she we were talking and she was talking about how gas prices are like man it's it's crazy how expensive gas is it's over three bucks a gallon you know all those all these kinds of things right 
And I was just like, yeah, it's, you know, I, I wasn't even paying attention to the cost because, like with gas, <laughs> the value is you get to go drive your car, right? Um, the price is the price, and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, and so I, I was just like, yeah. And then she was just said, increase wages, right? And I was just like, ah, right? And meaning she was just saying, like, pay me more money so I can afford gas, right? And I was walking out back to my car, and I just like kind of under my breath to myself. In but it was out loud. But I was just like, "Bring more value," you know, as I walked out. And some people might say, "Well, that's kind of a jerk thing to say, Nick," you know, right? And maybe it is. But I was thinking, I'm like, "You're a gas station attendant, right? You're you're no, there's nothing wrong with that, but like." What she does for however many hours a day that she does this, or however many hours a week that she does this, is she stands there and um, people go outside normally and just like put their card in and pump their own gas. So she doesn't really have to do anything there. Um, she'll tidy things up possibly when there's a, a dead spell. But basically, if she's like, somebody goes and buys a Mountain Dew or a Slurpee or a Twix bar, peanut butter Twix, which are the absolute best, by the way, peanut butter Twix. Anybody like anybody like peanut butter Twix? If you do, throw throw those hearts and emojis. Um, so um, it's just one of those things. I, I love those. But she rings those up and, you know, it's like she's got a computer screen in front of her and she pushes this, that she scans it. And that will bring up the thing, and she just beep, 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 tells you how much it is. Most of the time, she's not actually taking your money or taking your card and doing it. You're doing it yourself at the little thing, in case, unless you pay with cash, and then they have a minor stress attack because they're like, how do I make change on a $3.47 purchase, and he gave me a $10 bill, uh, right? <laughs> um, but there's not a whole lot of value in what she's doing, right? Like... Honestly, it's not something that you have to have specialized training. You learn the system of the computers and how they do stuff, right? But that's not something that you take years or even months or even weeks to learn. It's a really fast learning curve, right? And so when the value of the work that you're doing isn't high, you can't expect high wages or to make a lot of money, right? I don't know what, I can't remember what minimum wage is now. It's probably around $8 an hour is my guess. I don't know. Um, but you can't ex make eight dollars an hour, or, or you can't, you know, just push a button on a screen that there's a key at McDonald's. There's a kiosk where you can order your own food. So like McDonald's is like almost about to eliminate the front counter humans, right? Um, your job can be replaced by me doing it myself. Or a robot or some or computer doing it for you. You can't be like, I need to make twenty-five dollars an hour uh, doing something that doesn't involve that kind of work, right? Now that's something different. All of us are entrepreneurs. We have our different businesses, um, all that kind of stuff, and uh, <laughs> that actually made me laugh out loud. Says Josh. Um, <laughs> it's it, it's funny how how people think sometimes, right? But um, so we. We as entrepreneurs, you know, it's different for us because we have specialized things. Like, I don't know what everybody's thing is. I know Michael, his wife is a photographer and he's kind of like the behind the scenes, the wizard behind the curtain making everything work while she does the client work with the clients and stuff, right? And she's, she's nervous about being in front of the camera herself. I know that because I've lived behind cameras uh, for the last like four years, uh, well, three, if, starting four years ago for a couple of years, right? Now I love being in front of it. I'm super comfortable and I, I do it every day. And uh, what's up, Amy? How the heck are you? Good to see you. Um, how you been? How's the boat? How's life on the, on the, on the ocean? Um, but like Colleen, you know, she's working on affiliate stuff. She's got this health movement that she's, this journey that she's on and doing all these kinds of things, right? Um, there's value in her expertise and what she's learned to people, right? Like for me, like she's into like, she does the prove it and ketosis and ketones and and all of these things. Um, and I, I totally want, I, I need to get, get a get some of that and just try it because i hear a lot of people trying it and i love i sit here and i drink like six of these a day you know 
So uh, it would be nice to throw something that has some flavor in there, right? But it's like, it's, it's something that she has a uh, valuable knowledge that people will pay for her coaching, her guidance, and especially as she's been documenting this journey of her getting back to health and taking the small steps to the fast burn, right? That's, she's doing the work and the everything that she's learning through that is uh, valuable for the people she's going to be serving with it, right? Um, so it's we're not we're not somebody at a kiosk uh, pushing a button um, that everyone else could do. You know we're doing stuff, but in order for us to be able to charge and make the money that we want, we have to bring the value. Here's another example of this. Um, so in 2017, it was July 7th, 2017, to be precise, um, I, uh, I complained on Facebook about some challenges that we were having, and my friend from uh, childhood, Russell, Brun Russell Brunson, saw it. Um, oh, thanks, Colleen. That would be awesome. Um, I, will, I will do that. If I don't do it tonight, remind me, and I'll send you my address. Um, but... Um, I was working in film full time. Um, working in film is not Hollywood glitz and glamour if you're a crew member. It is long and arduous and grueling work. If you're if you're number one on the call sheet and you're like the star of the movie, yes, you have work. Um, but you know it's it's not as grueling as what I was doing, which is grip and electric, where I had to show up early sometimes, like sometimes two hours before call time to pre-light and get things set up. Um, and I was, you know, lifting and moving, having stuff all day, building things, taking them down, pick up, put down, loading the truck at the end of the day, being the last ones out typically because we had to load all the gear back into the truck. We had to get them on the carts and then the carts into the truck and then count and make sure we had everything, right? It was just like a long thing. And on good sets, I was making $300, $350 a day uh, for a 12 hour day. Um, a lot of times it goes over, you know, 12 hours. And so um, on paper, let's just, let's just calculate this. Um, I'm just going to calculate this. So if I made 300 a day, five days a week, that's 1,500 a week, times that by 52 weeks. If I worked full time at that rate, I would make $78,000 in a year. Um, working five days a week. Typically, you'd have six. So, you, you know, sometimes you have six. So it would go. But there are lots of downtime in between shoots and things like that. So it's hard to have that consistency, right? Um, but if I'm working 12 hours times five, that's 60 hours a week times 52. That's 3,120. So I said 78,000. Divide by 3,100, er, 20. I, I, I suck at math, but it's not a great hourly rate, right? <laughs> uh, when you think of the time that you spent, it's insane. And so when, when you think about uh, it that way, like 78,000 is, you know, not terrible by today's standards, right? It's respectable for many people, but the amount of work that I was putting in, it was tough, right? But on a movie set, and this is where Russell, he, he told me, he's like, dude, I know what you're working, I know what's wrong, uh, let me help you, and we, he helped guide me on some things. And uh, I'm forever grateful, and that's a big old long story for another time. But the thing that I realized is that when I was working on a movie, even like big budgets, there was an HBO movie that I worked on. It was called Mosaic. Um, it was directed and filmed by Steven Soderbergh, Sharon Stone, Paul Rubens uh, was in it. Like it was, it was a, a bigger budget movie. You know, um, it was over. It was like fifteen, twenty million dollar production, um, and those kinds of things. But if I'm on a show like that. And I'm just a production assistant, which when you're a production assistant, PA, you're making hundred, $150 a day tops in Utah at least. 
and it's not and you are the first ones in and the absolute last ones to go and you are the bottom of the barrel totem pole all that stuff you ha you can't sit down you're not allowed to sit down it's like look down upon i didn't care um but <laughs> i just did whatever i wanted because i'm a human and if i want to sit down i'm going to sit down it's not going to affect my job performance right but like all these little things but if i'm doing a small part of the production right if i'm just setting up the lights and making sure that it looks good but like you know or i'm just the guy that's running the electrical cables to the lights um, you know, I have my job and I do it, but it's a small part of the whole entire production, right? There's the script writers, there's the directors, there's all the actors, there's the there's the director of photography, there's the assistant directors and all the production team, and then there's the gaffer who works with the director of photography on the lighting plans, and then does all of the um, all of the the lighting schemes, and then he the gaffer has his best boy grip and his best boy electric and his key grip and then they have grips and electricians and then there's the sound guy who has the sound mixer and then there's the boom operator and then you know there there's the script supervisor that has to do all this like there are so many moving pieces then there's makeup and wardrobe and hair and <laughs> props and uh set design and uh, just, there's so much that goes into it right and even when it's a 10, 20 million dollar production, if I'm just working on the lights, or if I'm standing there as a paid parakeet to repeat what the first assistant director uh, says on the walkie-talkie, rolling, quiet please, you know, that kind of stuff, I'm not gonna make that much money. But if I'm the director of the movie, and it's, I'm, it's my vision, I have, either it's my own story or a story that I found and took from somebody else, but I've created a vision and I'm executing it and there's a lot of specialized stuff. He makes a lot more, the director, than a PA would ever, right? And so, you know, when, when it comes to, when it comes to uh, all the things that, um, that we do. Sorry, I had a thing pop up on my my screen here, but um, it's just one of those things that we can't expect to make a lot of money unless we show value. And yes, there's value in setting up lights on a film set. Absolutely, they wouldn't be able to make the movie without it. But it's it's uh, importance on the value ladder is low, right? Especially for the guy that's just a grunt who's a 6'9 giant who can lift heavy stuff who's just carrying lights and stands and things back and forth, right? Um, as opposed to somebody who's making the story come to life through either performance or their vision and they're guiding the, how it goes. There's, there's a little bit different, right? It's a little bit different. And so my, th my, my thing to you, um, if you want... To be able to charge the thing your your true value or get closer to it, um, your worth, then you have to bring the value. If you want to be able to say, "Show me the money" to your clients, which you should, and that's the thing. Also, um, like Colleen said, ask for it. If you don't ask, they won't do it. Um, then you you need to do it, right? Um, but the way to make it an easier decision for them and for you to feel confident in asking for it is bringing the value. That's what I love Lance. Um, I love giving Lance shout outs. He has been like one of the best implementers that I've seen over the last seven weeks of, of doing things that I've been teaching you guys. Uh, Lance, Colleen, and Aaron especially, um, and Val uh, that I've seen in my timelines and it's awesome. But today he talked about how he went through this process. He went to a lunch meeting and it was about getting parts that are warehoused in his shop so that when they need a part, they can just take it and then they get charged, or then they pay for it um, and then they invoice the client and, and all that kind of stuff, right? As opposed to going out on site, seeing what the problem is, ordering the part, waiting or going to a shop to go pick it up, um, that kind of stuff. They have it inventory in-house so that they can Quick, make quicker work of what they do for their clients, but also, um, you know, it's just, it's better for overhead for their business, all this kind of stuff. And when you're able to uh, decrease the overhead and your, your margins are better, like you can pass some of that savings on to the customers, right? It, especially with 
his type of service when some of the things are more price competitive as opposed to um, doing things. But he can totally work on becoming like the most expensive plumber in Wyoming um, and people will pay it because he's doing all these things that provide extra value, right? Um, he did a live two or no, this is like a week ago. But he was in the home of one of his clients they, like five years ago. This is the great thing, guys. Here's the lesson to learn. He went, uh, I don't know if he, they were back doing some maintenance on something and he just asked. Or if he just called up and said, hey, I'd love to come out and can we t uh, just film a quick testimonial video um, with you. But they went and they had installed five years ago a tankless water heating system in this house in Wyoming, right? And... Um, the the guy talked about how great the experience was and it was all this all this all this good stuff right but then not only did they install the thing that the client want but they did a couple of other things that they built to filter stuff so there weren't deposits in uh the water heater right um value adds extra stuff that they did right and that's why that client was so willing to give a great testimonial and the, as we talked about a few weeks ago um, about testimonials and the power of testimonials that will help him get more business right by using the experience that somebody else had with him to be able to do it but that experience that he shared like um, who was it who was it that shared it I'm just scrolling up Tanya talked about testimonials right testimonials are another way that you show the value instead of doing like that stack value stack type of thing testimonials show your value because it's customers who have already paid you talking and telling everyone how great their experience was with you and that is super valuable to you but also to people who are looking that they know that you're like oh man this lance is awesome oh colleen is super great and she did this oh my gosh tanya is amazing at this oh josh did this michael did this right when you have that going on your value increases and when you have more and more and more and more and more the more testimonials you have the higher your value and your perceived value is. Oh, I can't reach it, but like, remember how, remember how I talked about the, the FDNY hoodie that I got from my dad after he got it from the actual fire department in New York City when he went there after uh, September 11th, 2001 and he was at Ground Zero and gave a $140,000 check to the fire department. Um, that, the stories that we tell are where the value is built. Now, again, like I said, there is a time and a place for having a value stack. And that's like, you get like the, the infomercial, you get this set of knives, at this value and this set and this and this and this and this a total value of $5,300,042. But you pay two easy payments of $19.99, right? There's a time for that, but the stories that we tell, the narrative that we put out, the stories that our clients tell and all that kind of stuff. That is where our value increases. It's not just because we have technical expertise or we're really good at what we do. There's value in those skills, yes, but the value goes to the next level with those intangibles, with those extra things, with your expertise, with your awesomeness and the things that you bring to the table, right? Your service, um, those things that you um, stuff. Um, so Lance says, know your honest hourly price overhead and everything, then you'd be confident in that price, right? You have to be educated on your costs. I know for me, if I was to bring in um, my skeleton crew, the sun's starting to peek through the clouds, so I'm getting a little bit uh, overexposed to my face. Um, but, um, sorry, I'm just trying to decide if I want to change, change my blinds really quick. But, um, that when you know that stuff and you like for like I said for me on a skeleton crew like on a video shoot um, if I'm bringing in um, you know uh, a camera operator um, a lighting guy a sound guy and like an assistant to help with everything and I'm there too um, just for those four people my costs are right around twenty five hundred dollars for a day right I know that so that when somebody says we need to do this and I can see that's going to be a two or three day shoot, I know that I have to charge at least 7,000 
dollars or so to be able to cover my costs just for production. That's not the post-production and editing and graphics and all of that kind of stuff. And yes, I want to hire that stuff out instead of do the technical work myself so that I can work with the client on the messaging, right? So that's knowing our costs and everything is where we really can be confident in the value um, that we bring. And if you have to line item stuff out a little bit to show this cost this and this cost that, um, that's fine. The risk you take when you do that though is then clients automatically think that it's something they're like, well then we'll just we'll, we won't do that guy and this guy and we don't need this. We don't need that. We'll just we'll just do it uh, with my phone. We don't need a camera operator. You know that kind of stuff. Um, and for me, like with the video production stuff, it's not. That's that stuff is not nego is non negotiable, right? Um, and so that is that is uh, you know why why it's important to be able to bring and not be able to but to flat out bring the value to your clients okay pause one second go in the comments and let me know or is this making sense i'm gonna just close my blinds a little bit and uh because i'm getting a little washed out one sec that's better does that make sense? Just like Lance says, value stacking works. It absolutely does. What's up, Oren? How the heck are you, dude? Hope you're having an awesome day. Um, so if you're just joining us, we are talking about how if you want to be able to charge more, if you want to tell your clients to show me the money, you have to bring one thing, and that is value. Um, now, that doesn't mean this is this is where this is where I see things a little bit differently than others. Some people, you know, especially in the creative world, they always like talk about um, doing free work and things like that. Um, there is a time and a place for that, but I don't. I'm not a big fan of giving away the kitchen sink and creating a lot of extra work for myself um, and not making the mon making money from it. Right? Um, you know, it's like. I could do this and this and this and this and I want to and it's awesome, but if I'm going to give you a 90 minute thing and this and this and a video and a script and uh, all this kind of stuff, like that's going to cost more than like, I'm not going to only charge you 500 bucks for it, I'm only going to charge you $2,000 for it, right? Um, it's, it's just one of those things that as you handle that expectation, but also know the value of the work that you do and then just blow them away with value and service and goodness and all that kind of stuff. Good things happen. Yesterday, I, I mentioned this, um, uh, this little thing. Like, so over the last year, the way that I grew my business, I did two things. Two things. Do you want to know what the two things are that I did last year that took my business from zero dollars to uh, over six figures in eight months? You guys want to hear what that what these two things are? If you do, let's get those emojis going. Hopefully, they're working today. By the way, you guys, uh, you set a record for emoji hearts on a live. We were almost to 600 yesterday, so that was crazy. I'm not going to make you uh, do that today, but <laughs> um, I'm going to grab a drink really quick, and then I will tell you what that thing is. Last year, <clears throat> I grew my business from zero dollars to over six figures in eight months by doing two things. Colleen says, yes, she wants to hear what it is. Lance has a guess and says Facebook Lives and Funnels. That's a good guess, but that's not correct. Um, these are the two things that I did. Are you ready? I did two things. I shared my story. I shared my personal story and my journey. And I served people. Honestly, all the growth that I have, I can trace back to those two things. Those two things, telling my story, serving people. That is how I grew my business. Now, you might be like, oh, that's such a weird, that's such a, a lame, uh, excuse or a lame thing right you guys are blowing up the likes who is it lance thanks dude and colleen you guys are awesome 
Um, but it's like oh thanks Kurt <laughs> holy smokes awesome haircut um, I did those two things and you I, I'm not gonna go into how exactly um, I did them Facebook live was the, the main thing that I did to get my story out there but I served people as well um, I did things without an expectation of getting anything in return um, and you know I, I spent hours and hours on zoom calls getting to know people and giving some insights and hopping on calls and and helping people with things right and um, some of them turned into clients later because they got so much awesomeness that they're like oh my gosh okay I'm ready to take this to the next level what does it take and I'd say it's let's do this 90 minutes it was two hours at the time 90 minutes the sweet spot I found but like it's two hours and it's two thousand dollars and like okay where do I sign up and they would pay it immediately without question because they knew uh, that it was totally worth it right uh, based on what they'd heard about me or what they'd experienced with me right um, some of them never turned into clients they just those people just took right um, and that's okay because I didn't I didn't feel super bad about it um, because uh, People need help, and I was willing to, to give it, right? Um, so, Colleen says, you have coached people with these lives, thereby serving them. Exactly. See? It's when, like, I'm excited. If you if you don't, like, here's a little open loop. Tomorrow, I'm going to share something cool with you guys. Um, so, I want you to be prepared for that. So, like, make sure your notifications are on because you don't want to miss it. Um Something cool is gonna, uh, I'm gonna share with you guys tomorrow. So uh, be ready for that. But like, again, like by coaching, by giving, by serving and helping others. Like I said yesterday, um, that quote from Gordon B. Hinckley about forget yourself and go to work. Um, when, we, when we take that uh, focus, whether it's in our service in our communities or our churches or in our relationships with spouses or partners or family members or friends or neighbors, um, or with clients or people that could become clients, could things happen when you make that your focus, right? When you forget about your ego and all those kinds of things, but put yourself um, out there to help and serve people, good things happen. Referrals happen. Like that was a thing. So many, so many people last year didn't become paying clients, but they introduced me to somebody who did become a paying client, right? Um, they facilitated things like um, there's there's a guy, Ariel Brailovsky, I love that guy. He's in Spain, but he's uh, in the coaching program that I'm in. And uh, he and I had talked about lots of stuff and we're good friends. And he facilitated and offered a location for me to do a workshop last fall. And I was able to do that and I made money from that, right? And uh, he was the one that facilitated it because he saw the value and the relationship that we had built, right? So there are, all of these ways to bring your value. Um, yeah, Colleen talks about how you remember your story about how you landed a big client right after signing up for 2CCX. I totally, like, it's one of those things like when you take action and you're going, like things fall into place, right? Um, there was a quote that it was, this is like uh, geared towards religion in particular, but it's like, it says like when we put the things of God first, all prop, or when we put God first, all proper things will all things will fall into their proper place or drop out of our lives, right? And um, whether you're religious or spiritual or not, um, I am a big believer in when you put the first things first, when you prioritize and you put the good, better, best. When you put best for first, getting flubbed up. When you put your best forward, whatever that is, good things happen. The right things fall into place. The wrong things drop off to the wayside. And I've experienced that to a big, like I've had to learn big lessons with that this year. Um, man, like, you know, I've been sucker punched a few times this year and it's taken its toll on me mentally or emotionally throughout the year. I've had my ups and downs and things are, things are good. I'm in a good place. Um, like it's been hard financially, uh, all this kind of stuff with all of this turmoil and everything, right? But because going through that helped me focus um, I was able to get things uh, the right things in place and everything else 
fell by the wayside. And uh, now with these things that I'm working on, and you'll see a hint of it tomorrow with what I'm going to share, um, it's uh, it's going to fall into place, and like everything's just going to catapult into the stratosphere, right? So. If you want to charge more, if you want to charge your true value, what you feel your true value is, you have to bring the value, right? You have to show that value to the people that um, that you you want to serve. Colleen says, I, 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 I've heard that too. She, I forgot who said this, ego equals edging God out. Totally true, right? Um, it, it, depending on your beliefs, right? But like, yeah, I, I subscribe to that. Absolutely. But if we want to be able to charge what we want and have and charge the prices that we want, we have to bring the value, but we don't have to give away the farm either. We just serve and we do good. And when we share our stories, that is when we share and we serve, that is how the value increases, uh, you know, all across the board okay so uh, Lance says service before sales Chris fresh always says that it's wise wise words from that Chris fresh <laughs> so with that said how are you bringing the value to your clients to your communities and serving people and if you're struggling with it find a way to do some something totally selfless for somebody else and tell me if you don't feel better about things and tell me if it doesn't give you some momentum. That's something I want to talk about as well um, in a future episode, possibly, you know, Saturday or Monday, um, where we talk about how to true build true momentum. OK, so go out, serve, do good. Remember, your stories are the things that sell your products and services, the stories that you tell. You can make it all about prices and try to outbid or underbid people, right? But the value of your work and your services and your products comes with you. And people don't get to know that part if you're keeping silent. So Colleen, Lance, um, and everyone else that watches this that's been doing stuff, what's up, Ben? Um, Go and do, and good things will follow. Uh, continue doing it. So with that said, I have to go because I have a call in seven minutes um, with Dave Lindenbaum, and uh, I'm excited for it. So have an amazing rest of your evening, and we will talk to you soon.